Everything you can see right now was generated along a single path. It's a pretty useful skill to have in your toolbox as it could be used for everything from roads in a racing game to roller coasters in a tycoon game. In this video I'll cover extruding a mesh along a path as well as instancing meshes at set intervals with the correct orientations. First we need a path to work from, so add a path 3D node to the scene. When you have a path node selected you'll get some extra buttons at the top of your editor. The blue button allows you to select and move points in the path. The green button allows you to add new points to the path. If you click along the path you'll insert new points at that location instead of at the end. The red button allows you to delete points and the final button will close the path by placing a point at the start to finish the loop. I mostly just use the blue button though as you can hold control and click to add points and right click to delete points. Place some rough points in a top down view. These will look very jagged at first, so to smooth them out, hold shift and drag the point to create a curve. Move the points around until you're happy. Now let's create a simple road along our path. Add a CSG Polygon 3D node to our scene. The CSG Polygon node lets us create a flat shape that then gets extruded. Let's stretch out the default cube and flatten it down into a thin rectangle. Change the mode to path and assign our path to it. Just like magic, that flat shape has now been extruded along our path. We can even give it a texture like so. The path view distance property controls how many meters along the path the texture will tile. For something simple like a road, that's all it takes. We can even tick the use collisions property to make it collidable. Now let's create something a bit more complicated, like the minecart tracks from the intro. Create a new path like before for our track. The metal rails for the tracks are easy, so let's get them done first. It's just two small cube shaped CSG polygon nodes offset from each other. Be sure to tick the path local box to position them correctly. The planks are a little more complicated though. We don't want to just extrude a shape along a path for this. We want to instance and plank mesh instead. We can do this very efficiently using Godot's multi-mesh instance node and using some code to handle placing the instances. Create a multi-mesh instance node as a child of our path. Set transform format to 3D and create a box mesh on our multi-mesh instance and then attach a script to our path. Make our script a tool so it will also run within the editor, then export a variable to hold our distance between planks. Create another boolean variable called isDirty. We'll only want to recalculate our multi-mesh if something in the path changes rather than every frame, so we'll use this variable to control that. Create a function to update the multi-mesh and call it in the process function if our dirty flag is true. In our update function, let's start by getting the length of our path. We can then calculate how many planks we need by taking the floor of this length divided by the distance between planks. We can now get our reference to our multi-mesh and set the instance count. I don't want my planks to start right at the beginning of the path, so here I'm saving half of our plank distance as an offset. Now let's loop over each instance and calculate its position. The distance along the path will be our plank distance multiplied by i plus the offset. To get our position from the path, we can use the sample baked method and pass in our calculated distance. Finally, create a new transform with a new basis and our position, then pass it into the set instance transform method. One last thing to do before we'll see our meshes is to set the dirty flag when the path is updated. We can do this by connecting the curve change signal to our script and setting the dirty flag here. Be sure to also set dirty to false after an update. Now our mesh will appear along our path with the correct distance. The only issue is we still need to rotate it along our path too. We can do this by setting up the basis in our multi mesh transform. But first, what is a basis? Put simply, a basis is a way of handling orientation and scale of an object in Godot. It doesn't have the downsides of working with EULA angles, nor the headaches of trying to figure out how the hell a quaternion works. It consists of three vectors. A y vector that points up, a z vector that points backwards because negative z is forwards in Godot, and an x vector that points right. These vectors all point 90 degrees from each other. The magnitude of the vectors dictate the scale and the directions dictate the orientation. This is an example of a default basis. 
The y vector is 0, 1, 0. The z vector is 0, 0, 1. And the x vector is 1, 0, 0. Look how this changes as we rotate it in the editor. All we need to correctly set the rotation of our mesh is to figure out these three directions. How can we do that? Well, the z vector will be the opposite of our forward direction we want to face, as negative z is forwards. To calculate this, we can take the position on our path and calculate the distance to the position slightly further along the path like this. That gives us our forwards direction, and if we invert it with the negative sign, we will get our basis's z vector. Getting the y vector is even easier. Godot provides us with a curve function that we can use to get the y vector at any point along our path. All that leaves us to figure out now is the x vector. How can we get this? Well, we can use the cross product. Cross product is a maths function that allows us to get a vector at a 90 degree angle from our two input vectors. This is exactly what we need here. If we get the cross product of our direction and y vectors, we'll get 1, 0, 0. The order of the vectors in a cross product is important. If we calculate the cross product as our y vector crossed with direction, we'd actually get minus 1, 0, 0 here, which would essentially invert our object on the x-axis. The same thing is set in our x scale to minus 1 in the editor. Here's what this looks like plumbed into our multi-mesh update function. Now, if we go back to our scene and update the path, we should see our planks pointing in the correct direction. And that's all the hard parts done. The cave walls you saw at the beginning is just another CSG polygon node in a semicircle shape with the faces inverted to make it an interior. You can also use setters and getters on our plank distance to also set the dirty flag for smoother updates. Now you can see the benefit of doing this within Godot. We can change our path and everything will update instantly. Fantastic for prototyping. I think that'll do for this video. Hopefully you found this useful. I absolutely love that Godot has features like this out of the box. If there's any other topics you'd like covered, leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!